with medical hypnotherapy, well, let's say healing. You've all maybe have already heard of a lot of, and especially in holistic, we talk about the mind, the body, and the spirit. My body spirit practices and stuff of the sorts. Well, I'm going to show you where the medical hypnotherapy fits in into that mind, body, spirit. So if you just want to move for a second, go quickly in these. Just want to thank uh, San Francisco State University for having this and giving you guys an opportunity to actually see different holistic modalities and and understand them and, and understand that they, they, they do exist, people do pay for them, and more and more now. So just going now, so we're going to talk about the mind, body, and spirit, and how the medical hypnotherapy fits into that, and as well as the future prospects of this career. Those are three components, so just very quickly, um, the next thing, why is this becoming more and more important? Well, 100 years ago, we really just needed to worry about pneumonias, influenza, and tuberculosis. What kind of diseases are these? What kind of sicknesses? Yeah, what's going on? If you can check the next number, the next, what's happening? There's an infection going on. So we need to fight an infection. We need to purify. We need to, it's just about something outside has gone into the body. It's very body-based. However, nowadays, our main concerns are chronic disease. There's no infection there. Our main concerns are stroke, cancer, heart disease, lung disease. These are the top killers right now in disease. That is the biggest, one of the biggest, I think they said 85% of healthcare costs are chronic. Back pains that don't go away for 30 years. It's not a virus. And now there's a new deadly and chronic disease, which is the autoimmune disease. Your own immune system is doing something to self. So what do these have in common? I'll give you a little hint. The Good next self. one. What do these have in common? Stress. Does she really, is she at the top of her game? Does she feel like she can deal with her job? Yeah. There's a lot going on inside the body, and the body actually reacts to it. So let's just look at those, just briefly, those three components of any healing treatment. And I think all three are necessary, and more and more now, as you're seeing, because the diseases that are coming to the medical field is an infectious. Those are a very, very minority of the diseases that are coming in and are being worked through. So. Body. When a practitioner works in the body modality, it's they're either introducing something into the body, on the body. These can be nutritionists. This is mainly Western medicine. This is also Eastern medicine. We are giving herbs or applying needles in order to correct. This is like corrective measurements. There's something going on in the body. There's a symptom. There's too much of something, too many hormones, too much immune system activity going on, and what they're trying to do is regulate. All right? So their question is they're looking at the body as something must be broken here, and what can I do to fix it? How can I turn off the symptom? The next component, and I believe all three are necessary, is the mind component. This is your typical uh, hypnotherapy field. Ericksonian hypnosis would be in this area. NLP practitioners, coaches, psychotherapists, even biofeedback practitioners. What they're doing is, what can I help my client in their mind? What can I help them change about their beliefs or their attitudes or their lifestyles so that we can affect the body? And again, they're wanting to fix whatever's happening in the body because that symptom is saying there's something broken. All right? Now the third component. I spent a lot of time in that second component. Um, probably 50% of my work as a hypnotherapist is in that you doing stuff in the mind, especially with NLP, to influence the body. And it is effective. There is some amazing studies on visual imagery, on suggestion work, which is 
demonstrating how the mind is changing and influencing the body. While I was studying hypnosis and really getting into coaching and the NLP, on the side I was actually doing my own, just learning, uh, past life regression. I was receiving it. And at one point I started studying the transpersonal hypnotherapy, which was more used for spiritual. I think what I wanted to really mark today is the uniqueness of what I'm doing, the medical hypnotherapy, and what I would probably invite everyone here to do is the uniqueness comes in the combination of different modalities. So what I've done is actually taken the field of the transpersonal hypnotherapy, and there's transpersonal psychology as well, and this field is about going beyond the person, going beyond the I, and also going beyond the symptom, beyond the physical manifestation, to find out what's happening underneath that. So I always tell my clients that their conscious mind, the one that they come to a coaching you know, session to, is this one here, it's this you know, frontal lobe. And I say the unconscious goes from about here down to their toenails. And in that space of the subconscious, that unconscious mind, there's an awareness of the disease, what organs are affected, why it came in, what is the cause of that disease, and usually what's happening is the unconscious will tell us that there's limiting beliefs, there's behaviors that aren't healthy, there's a lot of self-judgments, and then in this same space in which we're, the subconscious tells us, well, there's this trauma that was never healed, or there's a lot of guilt, or there's a lot of grief, or there's beliefs that I'm not enough. And then in that same space of hypnotherapy, and hypnotherapy is just, it's a gentle, it's a gentle relaxation in which you take the client to like a space that's kind of like a dream, and we just talk to the elements in the dream. And in that space, we can talk to the disease, and the disease will show up as maybe a man in a cape, or themselves when they're 18. And in that same space, we not only talk to the subconscious, we can talk to the superconscious. Interesting enough, when you're in that space, and the subconscious says, um, she stopped being herself, you can ask right then, what does she need to know? And the client, right in that moment, gets the answer. I need to know that I am authentically amazing and that I'm, I'm built in this certain way to do certain things. And there's nothing about me that needs to change. And that, the client gets in that session and hears inside themselves. Because in that space, we also contact the superconscious. So in the transpersonal hypnotherapy, which I use in the medical field, we know we we find out the cause of the disease, the underlying causes of all those diseases we looked at, the cancer, <coughs> the chronic, the autoimmune, and in that same space, we understand the solutions. So when you do this over and over, because now you'll start realizing that the symptom is there for the sole purpose of learning. Everything that happens in your life is there for the sole purpose of learning. Relationships, traumas, love. And so the, the symptom no longer becomes something you have to fix. It becomes the teacher for something you need to learn. So how do you take all this spiritual mix into treatment? And let's take it back into treatment. What I've done in the last two and a half years is... I took one disease, I took an autoimmune disease, multiple sclerosis, and I studied it. I took 24 different people into that space of the transpersonal hypnotherapy, and we talked to their disease. We talked to the superconscious to find out the solutions of it. And if you ask over and over and over again different people, you start creating a mental map of what are the particular beliefs, behaviors, attitudes, that it's happening in that disease, and they, they're, they're in common to all the people that have it. They have their little, and you'll see in the next one, I think, each one has a particular flavor of being extremely internal, externally identified, for example. Each one has a particular flavor of 
the internal conflicts that are going on within. But there are these common patterns and are these common problems. And in that same space, and you can see that next one, we also understand, and the superconscious tells us, the common patterns to heal. To become more internally identified rather than externally. My value is not what I do in the world. My value is because I'm a human being and I'm here for a reason. So all of those elements, you can then see that they work together. That you can actually then take a problem, the cause, and understand the solution. And once you have those two mind maps in any disease, then regular hypnosis could go uh, and work on this. NLP practitioners, coaches, psychotherapists could then use this work to help a person shift and develop and learn. So in the particular way that I use medical hypnotherapy is I believe that people diagnosed with chronic disease have ingrained mental patterns, those beliefs, behaviors, attitudes, things like I have to control everything or else I'm not okay <coughs> is a very limiting belief. Also is very high intensity, very high anxiety. Um, for example, um, so people with chronic disease have particular mental patterns that we could do mental maps and learn about. And they're specific to the symptoms that they are, that are coming up. When you take those mental patterns, and first you show the client that they're limiting, that, there's, that it's limiting them, it's creating the disease. And then you teach the client and give them resources to change those patterns. Interesting enough, the symptoms disappear. And I've been working with people with multiple sclerosis. And they have shifted from using a cane to being able to walk. From having so much fatigue they don't get out of bed to being having no fatigue. It's a process because, as you saw, there are many things that need to be worked out. But as they work on these and they learn, their symptoms become absolute. They, they just